Marijuana today is much like gaming was 15 years ago or 20 years ago, and that is uh, confined to a few states, um, but uh, likely to expand. We didn't set out to, um, to be a presence in that industry. We were presented with the opportunity to bring in some lawyers who did practice in that area. We were not that concerned by the optics to be quite honest with you. We have a very robust gaming industry. We have represented distillers and beer companies. We have an office in Las Vegas. Uh, we have an office in Atlantic City. I don't think that we particularly saw a, uh, a, a big moral issue that had to be overcome. I, I don't think the world has come to an end in the state of Colorado. I don't think the world has come to an end in uh, Washington or Oregon. And in fact, the tax revenues are starting to flow in. So we think as a practical matter, this industry is likely uh, to spread uh, into other states. My own personal belief is if we look back 20 or 25 years from now, and people will say, what was the big deal? The conundrum in this industry is it's been sanctioned by a few states, legalized by a few states, and carved out in a few other states for medicinal use, but it's still a category one controlled substance to the federal government. You know, you're advising clients on, on business matters that, although they may comply with state law, could very well be felonies under federal law and could make you arguably a co-conspirator. There's an issue of how valid your advice can be uh, because of the fact that there is a federal prohibition and, and there's always the uh, argument that uh, whatever contracts you may advise a client are enforceable for state law may, under the guise of being in violation of public policy, be unenforceable at the federal level. So there's a lot of substantive pitfalls in how you give advice and then there's also the ethical issue of can you give advice